Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also publisher of Reading the Pictures. With mass shootings dominating the media space and the Supreme Court intent on loosening gun restrictions, it's not surprising to see news photographs responding sharply to the permissiveness and its worst consequences. This photograph was taken by Mark Abramson for the New York Times. It shows visitors and attendees at the National Rifle Association Convention in Houston, Texas on May 28, 2022. Three days before, a gunman in nearby Uvalde, Texas, used an AR-15 to kill 21 people at an elementary school. A month later, the U.S. Supreme Court overturned a New York gun safety law requiring a license to carry a concealed weapon in public. Boy, this image really illustrates the idea of guns from the cradle to the grave. If you read the image right to left, you get child and then adults and then an elderly person in a wheelchair. There's just an extreme amount of frustration in the country right now about the lack of gun restrictions, especially around automatic weapons. The last few months, the country has been reeling from high-profile gun massacres in Buffalo, New York, then in Valde, Texas, most recently in Highland Park, Illinois. So if the photo feels aggressive, I think it's really responding to something similar in the culture. You know, the dynamic of the photo is really driven by the young girl aiming the rifle seemingly at the older woman in the wheelchair. The angle at which the photo was taken makes it a little bit challenging to determine where the aim of that gun actually is. But the animation of the image in the context of that gun and the face of the elderly woman, who appears not only vulnerable because of age, because of being in a wheelchair, her facial expression and her body language, she's clutching a cane in her lap. She appears to be kind of looking over the edge of her clothing. Her hands are grasped kind of tightly around her mouth in a fist. There's a kind of fear and vulnerability and anxiety in her gaze. But then when you look back at the young girl, she seems largely to know what she's doing, this young girl. And in some ways, you know, that's an interesting kind of element of this image because the photograph of this girl with the gun really challenges the stereotype of white men with guns. I also have a hard time not thinking about the girl in this image in the context of the Uvalde, Texas shooting. Not only did that happen just days before the NRA convention in the same state, in the state of Texas, but also this child looks to be roughly the same age as those children who were murdered. So there's a lot happening here with age, with gender. It's really, really hard to kind of pull apart this image without continually returning to the ways in which gun violence has been in the news lately. If you're following it closely in Uvalde, Texas, what happened was the 18-year-old, before he killed 21 people at the elementary school, actually shot his grandmother in the face. So this is a really eerie and kind of twisted parallel. As the man in the blue shirt oversees his daughter, The photo makes me also think about guardianship and, in the worst case, the father of the Highland Park shooter who sponsored his 21-year-old son for a gun permit, even after brushes with the law, including a suicide and a homicide threat. The sideways look of the father, combined with the scariest reading of the gun angle, almost makes for an endorsement of those red flag laws. I'm struck by the kind of high contrast elements of this photograph, the sharp shadows, which, you know, may be caused by a flash going off in the context of a crowded convention center exhibition hall. That bright kind of in the spotlight look combined with the deep shadows that you see on the wall, especially behind the adult men on the right side of the image, really gives the image a kind of sinister tone. You know, the shadows of the men on the right almost seem kind of like they're looming over the child. And also that kind of contrast, that brightness and the dark shadows, in some ways could be read metaphorically, I think, in terms of thinking through the way the gun debate plays out. And in particular, the way the NRA has really itself as an institution fostered a very hard line, black and white, no middle ground gray space at all. It's important not to miss the Confederate flag on the hat of the man who's sort of caught in the spotlight, right? And the alignment you know, between that NRA badge and his hat with the Confederate flag, again, really highlights the extent to which the NRA has kind of planted its own flag in a particular camp in terms of what it claims is its defense of Second Amendment rights. 